Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this regular video come video, we're going to be once again discussing the Turing architecture, specifically the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti. We have further information, this time from PNY, who accidentally confirmed clock speeds, TDP, uh, the power connectors on the GPUs, and, well, just about everything. Oops. So let's start things out. First of all, we're going to go through the pricing because this is the only thing in the leak that is probably inaccurate because basically the uh, video cards went up pre-order a little early and therefore the pricing information is almost certainly a placeholder. They have it as 800 US dollars for the non-Thai and for the Thai, 1,000 US dollars. There's two things we need to take into consideration. One, these are the high-end variants of the PMY cards. I'll go into specifics of the SKUs in just a second. And the second is, and so they've probably put a price premium even if these prices are accurate. And the second is that, well, it's almost certain that these prices are inaccurate. Um, I'm hearing various figures in terms of the pricing. I've heard everything from $600, which I think is a little low, up to $700 for the 2080. And then you can probably add like an extra 100 to maybe 200, possibly even 300 on top of that for the TI. Um, honestly, it's probably also going to depend upon the LABs. I wouldn't be surprised if the Founders Editions are a little more expensive and possibly you could get some really cheap variants of the cards from certain AIBs and they might reduce the price over the MSRP by 50, maybe 100 US dollars. And of course, and I'm going to say something really obvious, but it also probably depends upon retailers and price gouging. In other words, if these cards do sell out really fast, it's possible for the first couple of days uh, the prices might go a little bit higher, but I suspect that this is probably not going to be too big of a deal. Uh, actually, NVIDIA released recently, excuse me, released their financial information for the last quarter. And according to them, I'm not going to go into the financials because it's outside the remit of this video, but according to them, they believe cryptocurrency mining, at least with the GPU, is pretty much negligible and is going to die in the not too distant future. So they're looking to once again focus on other areas to basically bolster their profits. So in other words, don't worry about cryptocurrency gobbling up these GPUs. It's almost certainly not going to happen. If it does happen, don't come after me with pitchforks, please. Blame NVIDIA. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, on a serious note though, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, and so if you do, you know, if you are a little bit concerned about the performance of the cards, and honestly, you are plonking down still an awful lot of cash, you could certainly wait for full reviews. And of course, we will be reviewing the GPUs as well. Uh, so do definitely stick around if you want that. Uh, we've also got Fred Ripper 2 in the works as well. We're going to be doing a lot of testing with Fred Ripper 2. It's actually one of the reasons that we're getting a little later because I actually requested... Um, <laughs> For us to be doing a lot of tests i can't reveal the information because i want to wait and then put it up but you'll see some really cool stuff on fred ripper 2 so i'm hoping that uh, it coincides that we can be testing a 2080 uh, based gpu along with fred ripper 2 but anyway that's slightly outside the remit of the video so let's move over to the specifications now these specific SKUs are the xlr8 and what's important to know is that these GPUs are not reference designs, so they do have a slight factory overclock. This affects two things. The first is the actual GPU core clock speed, and the second one is the TDP of the card. So you can probably add, let's say, 50 megahertz or so on the core, and possibly 20 to 30 um, watts of TDP. But even so, it gives us a good a really good part figure of what these cards will be capable of. So let's start things out with the RTX 2080. So the PNY RTX 2080 XLR cuts the number of CUDA cores to just 2944. So that is 100% confirmation that we're looking at 128 CUDA cores, fewer than the RTX Quadro uh, 5000. Uh, so that means that we're either looking at one or two streaming multiprocessor units disabled. It's unclear yet how many S how many um, CUDA cores make one SM. Uh, so the memory bus is 256-bit, 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 running at 14 GBPS, 448 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. That's, of course, 32 bits for each of the GDDR6 chips, times 8, so 8 chips total, because each one of those is carrying 1 gigabyte capacity, so that means 256-bit. As a slight aside, this, of course, does confirm 
the specifications that we've been hearing for a long time and it also reinforces the fact that if Nvidia wanted to it could theoretically put out a 16 gigabyte variant of this particular GPU. Uh, so moving on here's where we have the actual information we've been looking for for some time now. The base clock of this GPU is 1550 megahertz and it boosts up to 1710 megahertz and we have a TDP of 285 watts and a single six and a single eight pin power connector. So the boost clocks are a little slower for the 2080 versus the 1080. But before we do analysis on this, what about the tie? Well, once again, we have GDDR6 memory, 11 gigabytes because we have 11 chips. So 352 bit memory uh, interface or bus width. That's of course 11 chips, 32 bit per chip, times 11, 352 bit, which means 616 gigabytes per second of yummy, tasty, delicious and delectable memory bandwidth. The GPU does have CUDA cores. How many of them? 4,352, my good individual. I was going to say sir, but we do actually have women who watch the channel, so yeah. And I was going to say sir or lady, and it, it just sounds like a good individual. So anyway, uh, the card therefore has a clock speed. Well, what is the GPU clock speed? I'm glad you ask. It has a base clock of 1350 megahertz and boosts 200 megahertz addition to that, 1545. I'll go into dynamic stuff in just a second. It goes without saying that both of these cards have DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0B, the new shiny fangled USB-C virtual link as well. And of course, you've got all of the normal stuff supported as well, like Ansel and GeForce Experience, blah, 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 blah. That's technical. And also, of course, requirements for PCIe 3.0. I'll also point out uh, that this particular card has a TDP also of 285 watts, but has two 8-pin power connectors, and the minimum PSU is 650 watts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also going to add in for LOL's level that you also require at least 8 gigabytes of RAM for your main system and you also need 16 gigabytes is recommended. I find that those requirements are kind of amusing and I don't mean that in a bad way. Like if you've got a lower end system, you know, if you've got an 8 gigabyte system, then fair enough. But I don't think many people are going to be like, gosh, I've got four gigabytes of main system memory and like a 300 watt power supply and an i3, like, you know, 6100 or something like that. I think the thing to do is to put in an RTX 2080 tie because that would basically build them an entire new PC. It's kind of, it's kind of bonkers, but there you have it. Just for a second, let's compare the 2080 versus the 1080. So the 1080 has 2,560 CUDA cores versus 2,944. The TM new number has not been confirmed yet. It's expected to be 184, but that's a question mark thus far. Uh, that's compared to 160 of the 1080, the same number of ROPs, 64. I'll get into the clock speed in just a second. Same bus width, but obviously much faster memory. Uh, it's got 14 GBPS compared to 10, so you're looking at 128 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth additional. And therefore, we're left with two questions, the clock speed. And of course, the first thing you need to take into consideration is that, let's say 1700 megahertz, just so that I don't go insane whilst discussing these clock speeds. That is not the absolute max. We all know that GPU boosting works based upon the heat of the GPU, power consumption, and so on and so on. Similarly, let's say the GPU load is like, I don't know, let's say you're running Tomb Raider 2013 because you're going through the game again, and you're running at 1080p just for the hell of it because, I don't know, you forgot to do downsampling for a second. Well, it's almost certain that the GPU usage is not going to be at like, I don't know, 100%. Therefore, of course, NVIDIA's hardware just like AMD's hardware, it's smart enough to know, well, gee, I don't really need to boost to, to this clock speeds, therefore it will operate closer to the base speeds. But if it does feel that, okay, I've got room rest left in the tank, it's gonna go higher. Now, I know I keep bringing this rumor up, but there are reports that uh, Nvidia have been improving the uh, Turing architecture for better uh, granular clock speed adjustments and possibly higher clock speeds overall with boosting. So it's possible 
and in my opinion rather likely that the clock speeds we're hearing here for example the 1700 odd for the 2080 is pretty conservative my guess is and by the way once again just to remind everyone this is the AIB model for PNY it's almost certain that you're going to be getting at least 100 megahertz possibly 100 meg uh, sorry 200 megahertz addition to that and this is also not including overclocking so if you do decide to let's say raise the power limits up if you decide to increase or change the fan of the uh, GPU clock if you decide to you know manually tweak clock speeds or perhaps flash the BIOS if you're feeling very brave or strap a uh, I don't know block of ice onto the GPU don't do that um, then that's all down to you and once again you can probably imagine that clock speeds were going up I also would be very curious to see how limited these GPUs are by memory bandwidth and of course there's really easy ways of testing that keep the core clocks the same or lock them to a certain frequency and then start playing around with the memory clocks and let's see just how memory uh, bandwidth constrained this particular architecture is there's also some reports to say that uh, or some fear is that uh, Turing is just basically Pascal on 12 and M that's almost certainly not the case from what I'm hearing. There are numerous major changes. We've gone into the architecture of Turing before. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. If not, you can search on the channel Turing architecture because we did recently cover this. Turing is quite different to Pascal. Some of the information has not been confirmed though. Like for example, how the unified cache system works on Turing compared to Volta. From what I understand, it's more Volta-like there, but some of it hasn't been confirmed. There's also some changes on the tensor cores, but that specifically at the moment, I can only, I can only uh, confirm is for the um, Quadro series. And this does leave us a couple of questions. Primarily, what about RT cores and what about tensor cores? You'll notice that there is no specifications listed here. So it's missing, right? There's no Turing, there's no, sorry, there's no ray tracing. Well, I can almost say that that's not the case, uh, because if you scrolly uh, through the various lists of uh, blurbs that they've got, I'm not going to read out all of this because I'll be here for the next 20 years or so, but it does say, and I'll start at the beginning, NVIDIA's new flagship graphics card is for revolution in gaming realism performance is powerful NVIDIA Turing architecture breakthrough technologies. I'm going to skip. And then it says, and I quote, that this gives you up to six times the performance of previous generation graphics cards that bring the power of real-time ray tracing and AI to games. And that's what gaming is all about. It's, uh, it's uh, realism, GeForce uh, RTX 2080 Ti is light years ahead of other cards, delivering truly unique real-time ray tracing technologies for cutting edge, hyper-realistic graphics. And the reason I'm stressing that word or term ray tracing and six times performance is because of course it's comparing it against the previous generation. So in this case, it would be uh, Turing versus Pascal. So in this case, it would be, let's say the 2080 Ti versus the 1080 Ti. And if it's offering six times the performance, I don't care what they've done to the CUDA cores. It's not possible to offer six times the bloody performance with just tweaks to the CUDA cores. It's just not going to happen. There has to be some underlying technology. Jensen Huang went on stage and said that, yeah, one of the major things we did with the architecture is we tweaked it so that um, rate, sorry, the RT cores were the things that made this possible. Up until this point, real-time ray tracing in games was impossible. The RT cores do a variety of different things. And once again, I did go into this quite in depth in the architecture analysis, uh, which is part one. We will do an in-depth one when we uh, learn more about the architecture. But thus far, what we understand is that it's essentially doing checks. It's doing bounding checks to find out where the light is actually bouncing to and from in a scene. And it does those checks. It's specifically designed to perform those checks. So because of this technology, combined with the tensor cores, we can almost certainly say that because of the wording um, and the fact that RT cores, we know Jensen Huang has gone on stage and has said that RT cores are responsible for allowing real-time ray tracing to run in games. It's been the culmination of years of work over in video. And ultimately, the RT cores perform a variety of different checks. They basically calculate where light intersects and what objects the light is actually interacting with in scenes. For example, is it interacting with geometry? Is it just flying out the scene and therefore no objects are interacted with with that specific rate of light? And of course, the tensor cores themselves then upscale the 
image using AI. It uses uh, AI pattern, uh, pattern recognition to upscale the image. It's quite a long thing. Once again, I've gone into it in an architecture video, so I don't wanna to spend too long on it in this specific video. But the bottom line is that Yes, there are some significant differences. It's almost certain that we will be seeing RT cores in the 2080 and the 2080i. We also saw the recently released Project Sol. That's S-O-L. That's kind of cleverly worded, right? And it's a combination of work from Microsoft, the folks over at Epic, who of course create Unreal Engine. Uh, at this point, it's 4. Point whatever it is, and uh, Nvidia themselves, and they are working on Project Sol. And of course, it shows real-time ray tracing, and on NVIDIA's official blurb, RTX platform allows software APIs and SDKs running on advanced hardware to provide solutions for capable and enhancing graphics, photos, image, and video processing. And these include ray tracing, optics, Microsoft DXR, and Vulkan AI acceleration, and so on and so on. The fact is, it's unsurprising Vulkan's listed there, but it does mean there's a tantalizing possibility that the new Doom Doom Eternal, which looks amazing. Seriously, watch Doom Eternal trailer if you haven't done so. And no, I'm not getting paid by Bethesda to say that. But seriously, it looks amazing. Um, so yeah, uh, it's possible that we could be seeing Vulcan games like Doom Eternal. And this is a slight aside, but I'm going to finish the video by saying this. Right now, the only title that is uh, supported, confirmed with ray tracing is Metro Exodus. Now, don't get me wrong, it looks impressive, and don't forget it's not being released until February, I believe it is next year. So they've got a while to work on it, but I suspect Jensen and Nvidia will probably announce something else. Now, this is an example, but let's say Shadow of the Tomb Raider uh, was receiving a post patch update which put ray tracing into it, or let's say the new Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 15, whatever. You know, a big game like that, I think it would make people go, okay, I want this card. And the reason I suspect this is going to be the case, and I'm not basing this off of rumors, I'm not basing this off industry whispers, I'm not basing this off, you know, uh, some dude from Square Enix who have emailed me or anything like that, so I don't want you to uh, misconstrue this, but it would make sense because if there's one thing that drives someone nuts in PC gaming, especially if you've got a high-end card, is to have a setting that you cannot enable. I mean, you could technically enable it with, let's say, GTX 1080i, but imagine having this card, and I don't know how intensive Shadow of the Tomb Raider will be, but let's just say you've got a 1440p monitor, and let's say Shadow of the Tomb Raider will run at, like, 80 frames a second average with everything max on a GTX 1080i. You're going to say, well, I've got a 1440p monitor now. I'm not that fussed about upgrading. I can wait until... Oh, wait, it's got this really cool feature called ray tracing. Ah, I want it! And you try to turn on, your frame rate goes like... Actually, let me just do the math on this. So you'd get 13.3 frames a second <laughs> on, uh, with ray tracing enabled. Of course, I'm being a bit silly. But you get the idea. Imagine suddenly you would be like, uh, kind of want the ray tracing and then you might upgrade. Um, so that's definitely one possibility. I'm not saying uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a shoe-in. It wouldn't surprise me, but I would be very surprised if Nvidia did not uh, list a couple of games or said that certain titles were coming in the not too distant future to back up the next generation GeForce's launch. With all of that said, that's a lot of stuff. Do stick with us here at RGT. There is gonna be a lot of reviews. Uh, as you know, there's been a couple that popped up I can confirm there's been a there's going to be a B450 review up in the next few days. There's going to be a PC review, a monitor review, two sets, set, two sets, excuse me, a memory review, and then next week I think it's next week we're getting Fred Ripper. Uh, we're going to be ordering an RTX 2080 ourselves, and there's going to be some other stuff coming on the channel. I also want to give a huge shout out to someone. And that's you who was watching the video. That's right. And many of you actually, have, there's several of you watching this video right now on, in the same room and on the same screen. In which case, I don't know what you're doing to do that in the same room and the same screen, but that's pretty awesome. Anyway, so yeah, I just want to thank you all for watching and all of the new subscribers. It is seriously appreciated. But for now, I'm going to run off and leave you all to it. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.